Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 12th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, a quick diary today with some honeypot logs. In this particular case, it's logs from our SSH honeypot cowrie and well, sort of walking you through some of the little bit odd logs that sometimes confuse people who are new to these kind of logs. Often these events are associated with attackers fingerprinting the honeypot, trying to figure out if they're connecting to a real system or a honeypot, kind of playing with some of the limits of the simulation that software like Kauri provides. Question that always comes up is, well, you know, can software like Kauri actually provide a better emulation of the actual system? And it certainly can. The developers of Kauri are pretty good in sort of catching up uh, with some of these issues. But overall, of course, it comes down to the whack the mole thing where for every new behavior that's being implemented in Honeypot, an attacker will come up with a slightly different trick to still detect their connection to Honeypot. Just the nature of the thing. And of course, with Honeypots, you typically are not going for the more targeted attacks, but you're more going for widespread automated attacks that often don't care if they're connecting to Honeypot or not. And we do have actually quite a few vulnerabilities to talk about today, but before we do so, I do want to remind you how important it is to track these vulnerabilities and the reason why I mentioned them. One product where I have mentioned vulnerabilities in before is Veeam, the backup software. There is now a report from Group IB that they have seen an a vulnerability being exploited. Uh, this is a Veeam vulnerability that was patched originally about a year ago. So make sure you are keeping up to date with these vulnerabilities. In particular, systems like Veeam that are not uh, reachable necessarily from outside your network, they still sort of provide a great sort of lateral movement target for an attacker. And of course, access to backups in itself gives them access to a lot of information, can also make ransomware worse by then deleting or corrupting these backups. So talking about vulnerabilities, we do have updates from Juniper. Juniper patched a total of 46 vulnerabilities. Luckily, only one of them is rated as critical, and that's actually a browser vulnerability in JunoS space. Also worth mentioning the OpenSH regression vulnerability has also been affecting JunoS. A patch was released a few days ago. VMware patched a SQL injection vulnerability in its area automation software. This one is not rated critical in part because it does require an authenticated user in order to take advantage of the vulnerability. In that sense, it's more of a privilege escalation vulnerability. And Palo Alto fixed a missing authentication problem in its Palo Alto Networks Expedition tool. Expedition is a tool that's being used to migrate from non-Palo Alto systems to Palo Alto. As part of that, it actually has to know the credentials for your different networks uh, devices that you are migrating from and to. So an attacker who has access to Expedition via this missing authentication vulnerability would have access to these credentials. According to Palo Alto, there is no known exploit for this particular issue. And for a while now, the use of SMS for multi-factor authentication has been somewhat discouraged. I always say, well, it's probably better than nothing, uh, but definitely shouldn't be used for something critical like financial data. When it comes to the threats against SMS, one vector that's often being overlooked is various uh, web services, APIs, uh, websites that are being used to send and receive SMS messages. So for example, if you're sending an SMS message for two-factor 
the authentication. It often uses an API from various providers that make it very cheap and easy to send these SMS messages. On the receiving side, you often have telecom companies that are offering a web-based interface to their users in order to read their SMS messages. Well, it turns out that this is actually probably the real problem when it comes to SMS, much more so than SIM swapping and other attacks. There is an article by the Chaos Computer Club, a German uh, organization. Sadly, the article itself is in German only, but uh, they looked at uh, identify mobile uh, provider of two-factor authentication via SMS. And uh, in their particular system, they were able to gain access to almost 200 million SMS messages due to leaks in their access control. And these messages did often include multi-factor authentication codes. I remember in the past, Twilio, which is another very large provider of SMS services, has had some issues uh, like this. And there were, for example, Verizon in their website also, I believe, had in the past issues that leaked the content of SMS messages. Well, so what should you do? In my personal opinion, you should probably move away from two-factor authentication via SMS. However, if the website isn't like very critical, let's say an e-commerce uh, application, and it's difficult enough to get people or customers uh, to use SMS or any kind of two-factor authentication in the first place, then SMS is still probably better than no two-factor authentication. However, financial systems, internal admin access and the like should probably move to a stronger means of multi-factor authentication like hardware tokens, one-time passwords and the like. Well, and this is it for today. Remember, next week, Sans Fire. If you're at Sans Fire, stop by, uh, say hi. I'll have uh, stickers around. Monday, I'll be giving a keynote. Definitely plenty of stickers available there. Thursday, we'll have sort of a honeypot workshop where we actually do have a bunch of honeypots to give away. So if you do attend uh, Sans Fire, Hope to see you at one of these sessions. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for leaving good comments. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.